You're gonna love the content you're about to watch. And it's especially for beginners that are starting with heat printing. Kelly and Liz will walk you through heat presses and the basics of heat transfers. This content was recorded as part of our Heat Press for Profit virtual event in January 2021. I know you'll enjoy it. We're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending the evening session for our Heat Press for Profit live event. Um, this series that we are doing is part of the Getting Started series, and we are going to kick it off with getting started with a heat press. I'm Kelly Walters. This is Liz Reedy on the other end, and we're going to be talking both about Stahl's products, Transfer Express products, and of course, the thing you need most, which is a heat press. So we're going to kick it off with the PowerPoint and then in between of some, you know, actually just going through some slides, we are then going to break it down with some applications. So um, bear with us as we transition. And of course, as we heat apply, if you have any questions, make sure you pop those questions in the pathable link, not in the Zoom link. Um, we are going to do our best to get everything answered, but if we could keep all of the questions in one section, I promise you it will be 10 times easier to make sure we can check all of those boxes. And um, both Liz and I decided that, that there were a couple of documents that would be really beneficial for you guys. So you should be able to go to the file section and download several um, documents that will help you with getting started, um, when to choose or what type of, uh, what are we, what's this, heat press? <laughs> what heat press to choose, what to use when PDF and um, the design placement guide. So we just hope that this is as best explained as possible. So let's, Let's get rolling. I'm going to share my screen and you should see a, a PowerPoint pop up. Now, for those of you that aren't too familiar with how this works at the top right hand corner, there's going to give you a viewing option. And if you click theater mode, you should be able to see myself and Liz as we are talking through this and the PowerPoint. And then, of course, when I remove the PowerPoint, then we will will become full again. So, all right. Here we go. Woo. Okay, guys. So like I said, Heat Press for Profit live event. Thank you so much for attending. And this is the getting started with a Heat Press series. Uh-oh. There we go. <laughs> so go, Liz. All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us tonight. Um, good evening, good early afternoon. I'm out in our uh, Transfer Express office here in Menor, Ohio. So happy for all of you to join us. We're gonna have a really great time. Don't forget to, um, we have a moderator that's gonna be answering your questions as we go. So here we go. So all you need is a heat press. So this is something that is ingrained from us from day one when you're starting a t-shirt business and we love to coach, all you need is a heat press. So getting started. Now, throughout other presentations and other classes, everyone take a deep breath, <sighs> grab your pen, grab your coffee, grab your adult beverage, grab what you need to relax, and let's get ready to dive in with more information. So, heat presses. Um, the ones that you see here in the PowerPoint presentation, we have the Pink Craft Press, the Swing Away A to Z Press, the one in the middle, and then our Hotronics Clam Shell. So throughout other presentations, I know other um, speakers have touched base on a lot of our heat presses. And I want you to know that towards the end of this presentation, we will um, dab a little bit deeper into more of the specs on them. So what's important in starting your business is having a good quality heat press. So as you can see, there's different styles, like as there's the swing away, as you see for that A to Z, and then you also have the clam shell. All three of these presses, all of Hotronics presses are amazing, but the common core factor is that heating element. That's the awesome thing. Whether you get the craft press, that adorable pink one right there, or you get the dual fusion. The awesome thing is, is that you're gonna get that constant heat. So what we like to implement are three things, time, temperature, and pressure. With those top three things, we call it the trinity of heat pressing, you're going to be able to offer your customers high retail, high-end products for them. 
Kelly, anything you want to add? <laughs> um, like she said, there has been a lot of information given over the course of the day, and we are going to give you a lot of information today. So um, take what you can and just know with a heat press, there are a variety of options on what you can actually heat apply. It doesn't just have to be apparel with what you're seeing. So we're going to just dive a little bit more into that. All right, so what can you decorate? Um, of course, the common things oh, um, are t-shirts, sweatpants, you know, hats. But as you've seen throughout other classes, it's more than just the hats and the t-shirts and the sweatpants. You can do shoes, you can do mittens, tote bags, umbrellas, swimsuits, slippers, book bags, lunch pails. I mean, the holidays you've done, you do stockings. There's no limitations. And so we want to encourage you to open your mind, challenge yourself, because you want to be able to offer, like we said, your customer um, just a variety than just the t-shirt, which t-shirts are still amazing. We just want you to know that to broaden your horizons and just to have fun with it. Here, I muted myself so I wouldn't pop up when Liz and now I keep talking and I'm muted. So, so some things to consider, you guys. Um, it's so important to make sure that you have prop proper electrical outlets. Um, yes, these types of machines are so easy. They're plug and play. You don't have to do much to set them up. It's really just take it out of the box. Make sure your platen is where it needs to be. And then you plug the machine in. But if you aren't running the proper voltage, then shortages happen. And more importantly, that means that your um, upper heating element may not be getting enough um, juice or power to properly heat. It's going to show that it's on and it's going to show that it's at 300 degrees or 260, but it actually may not be heating up at that exact temperature. Workspace and equipment footprint. Um, as you can see, like I have set everything set up in a pretty small area right now. But what that means is this heat press, it's on, it's at 290 degrees and it is a furnace in here right now. So make sure that you, you know, plan for where your heat press is going to be. If it's upstairs in a room um, and in the summertime at 280 degrees, just know you're probably gonna be an oven in that room. If you're in the garage, it may be colder. The other thing is to also plan for weeding, shipping, and really just kind of organizing all of your items. And that could be something simple like where you're going to put your transfers and then where you're going to put your garments before you actually heat apply them. The other thing to consider is what are you commonly decorating? It's going to be a lot easier to have a couple of bins of t-shirts than maybe it would be to have backpacks just because those t-shirts fold up, rolled up, uh, roll up a lot smaller than what bags do. Same thing, if your specialty is decorating on shoes, then you're accounting for shoe boxes and not um, you know, very, very tiny things. Inventory kind of goes along the same way. You have to store those products more than likely. Otherwise, you'll just be ordering on demand and then pressing as you need to. Now, um, some essentials, right? So heat press essentials are very, very important. If you're going to be cutting and weeding in-house, you gotta have a weeding tool. Um, some things that maybe people don't necessarily think of until they have an item that is needed is what's called a, this is a big one, <laughs> a heat printing pillow. And this just allows you to print on a variety of garments and really protect some of those elements that may potentially um, melt or just not give you that flat printing surface. Same thing for print perfect pads. It's just a really, really thick, dense pad. And then craft paper cover sheets. Um, this is something you would want for some like sublimation, vinyls, um, anything from twill 
These are all little tools that you will need um, to be successful. So what's the difference? Huh, this is the tricky part. If I have ever had a dollar for any time somebody has been like, what's the difference between transfer express or stalls? Or what's the difference between vinyl and screen printed transfers? So you guys, vinyl, this is the easiest way. It comes in a roll form and a logo is then cut from that. And a screen printed transfer comes to you on a gang sheet. Now, what you would use vinyl for would be smaller runs, one to two colors, because you can't necessarily get a full color run on this. And then you typically price those jobs based on square inches, or if you're ordering through stalls, you would be ordering a transfer based on square inches. With screen printed transfers, you typically want to use those at quantities of 25 plus max three colors. And then of course, those are priced based on sheets, which means that you could gang a sheet. And if you're only doing say a one color black ink and you could fit four different logos on there, then you've maximized that sheet to the fullest. This is going to be per transfer and a screen printed would be per sheet. All right, so Kelly kind of explained um, just a brief description on the difference between vinyl, you know, CAD cut and screen printed heat transfers. This next slide that you see is what to use when. So this kind of gives you a basic foundation when it comes to, okay, should I go with vinyl? Should I do full color screen printed heat transfers? So at the top, you can see color quantity and then along the side, garment quantity. So for example, let's say um, a customer comes up to me and says, hey Liz, I have two colors in my artwork, but I wanna get a hundred pieces. I need a hundred sheets of it. So you can kind of, okay, color quality, quantity two, garment quali uh, quantity, a hundred screen printed transfers. So this is a very simple chart, but I also like to add, don't hesitate to ever reach out to any of our stalls reps, customer service reps, amazing team. We love what we do here. And please utilize us. We are your, we're alongside you in this journey. We're your coaches. So I know this might seem confusing, but email us, call us, use this platform to ask your questions. So this is gonna be just a basic guide of what to use when. Anything you wanna to add to that, Kelly? I don't like this unmuting thing. <laughs> um, no, she hit the nail on the head. Um, if you are brand new to this, or if you come from the screen print side and you're working your way into vinyl, um, this is definitely utilize the people that are around you because at the end of the day, we want you to be successful and we want to make sure that you guys have the right tools to be successful as well. Oh, wrong. Hold on. What is happening? common terms. <laughs> I was thinking another, another page was supposed to come up first. I'm like, what's happening? So, okay, you guys, common terms, low temperature application. Um, we refer that, refer to that a lot because sensitive garments are very, very prevalent in our industry. And that could be rayon, a tri-blend, um, even nylons can be sensitive, but polyesters are the biggest one we see. And of course, with tri-blend tri t-shirts making a huge impact, that's where the low temple cannot talk today at six o'clock at night. So low temperature application is huge so you can protect the garment. Um, now, full color means you are using more than four colors. Uh, that also means gradients, shadows. Um, I like to use the example of the world or like the universe where from a distance you can see a whole bunch of different shades and it's not just three three specific colors. And then of course the finish is the hand or appearance. So a shiny matte 
it has a sheen, it has a little bit of a sparkle or a foam hand to it. Those are all types of finishes that you may hear from us, but you will definitely hear throughout um, the course of our live event. Okay, so the first one we are gonna talk about is that CAD Cut HTV. Now, what the heck is CAD Cut? CAD Cut is what we call our heat transfer vinyl. So CAD Cut is our category, and then within CAD Cut, there's a whole bunch of different styles. So the two that we're gonna focus on today um, are both ultra weed and metallic. So our heat transfer vinyl, just great to use any time, very, very low application temperature is what is called ultra weed. Just to give you an idea, this is what it looks like before it is cut into a transfer. Now, um, I am going to just move some things around because I am going to apply a, an ultra weed sample for you. So First and foremost, it is a matte finish. You guys, this is very, very soft. Um, if you have the ability to play with some samples, definitely do so. Um, I like to say it, it feels like it almost goes into the shirt. Um, low, low temperature, meaning you can go down to 260, up to 300 degrees, and effortless weeding. It's, it just peels right off. However, it also has a tacky carrier, meaning that you can get some high detail. Now, a um, metallic we're going to just briefly touch on. It's a chrome finish. So it is very, very difficult to get this type of finish in the screen printing world, as well in the heat transfer vinyl world, because a lot of people are concerned about it being thick and just crunchy. But keep in mind, it's very, very thin. It moves with the garment so it doesn't feel rigid. And of course, another bonus is that low temperature application. So let's see if I can effortlessly stop sharing. Okay, guys. So what we are going to do is heat apply our CAD Cut Ultra Weed. So this is already been cut, as you can see. It has been weeded and this backside is tacky. Now, when you are cutting and weeding this, and if you look at it from this point, it, well, this is correct to you, but to me, it's going to be backwards. That's because when you actually put it on the garment and then peel that clear piece, it will be right side up. So today we are just using a, um, I believe this is, nope, it's a Bella canvas, and it's just a crop, very, very trendy right now. I have my press set at 290 degrees. This is one I could go down to say 275. The reason why I don't is because um, there's another transfer that I'm going to be using that will be used at 300 degrees or 390, excuse me, 290. And just to keep it simple, I'm staying with one temperature. So as you saw, I am using the auto clam. I just opened my shirt like a pillowcase, and then I have threaded it on the platen. Thread means just put the platen through it. That's the easiest way to describe threadability. So now the next thing I'm going to do is try to remove any type of seams or ridges off of the platen. So I'm just going to slide my collar down, and then now I have everything falling off. The next thing I need to do, I'm just going to put my cover sheet is I'm going to check my pressure. So what I'm going to do now is just drop it. It's not even reading a pressure, so I need to clearly adjust that. So I'm going to use this black knob and just adjust. With Ultra Weed, we will apply um, for a medium pressure, which is between four to six. We pre-pressed for five seconds. And then this is going to apply for 12 seconds. Now with this material, it would help if I put it on there, it is a hot peel. So what that means is as soon as this upper platen releases and I'm not going to burn myself, then I can remove that carrier and our shirt will be complete. 
So this is going to tick dock down. Now with metallic, to give you an idea, it is a cold peel. So we need to make sure that the carrier has cooled and then we'll be able to peel. So very, very easy. And now we have a nice matte, very, very soft, feels like it's not there in this really, really lightweight shirt. So you guys, I'm gonna share my screen back. And I will say we'll move on as soon as I can click to it. <laughs> All right, so screen printed heat transfers. So Kelly was just demonstrating um, some products from stalls for uh, metallic and ultra weed. So we're gonna dive a little bit into Transfer Express and a couple of their products. So the first one I wanna talk about, which is one of my favorite, just one of my favorites, cause I love a lot, is Goof Proof. So I know that's name sounds silly, but Really at the end of the day, it's user-friendly, anybody can use it. So first thing, easy to use. Over 65 stop colors and fast application time at four seconds. Yes, just four seconds and you have a completed t-shirt. So I'm gonna press one cause I really need to get moving. It's really cold in this room. So. Basically screen printing, just to give you a little 101. So traditional screen printers, what they do, it's plastisol ink, and it's actually pushed through a mesh, a mesh screen, and it goes onto the garment. But here at Transfer Express, what they do is they push that plastisol ink onto transfer release paper. So same concept, only on your release paper. So I'm gonna press one of these to show how quick and easy Goof Proof Plastisol Ink is so easy to use. So I didn't cut this first, so bear with me. So I have a gang sheet. The beautiful thing about uh, Goof Proof is you can gang sheet. Look, I got my front, full front logo, and then I have something I could put on the back, left chest. So I'm gonna cut out the front logo here. Make sure I get the right one. So I'm going to cut, cut, cut. And the heat press that I'm using today is the Hotronics Fusion IQ. And my garment, it's nothing fancy. It's just a Port and Company um, core cotton t-shirt. So Kelly, do I have a good angle here? Okay. So what I'm gonna do first is thread my garment, just like you saw Kelly do with hers. So one of the features you might have already seen, the Fusion IQ, this drawer does pull um, out and also has a swing away feature as well. So first what I'm gonna do is I am going to Pre-press my garment for four seconds. So what that does, it really, it opens up the fibers and release, releases the moisture from the garment. So this is a manual heat press. So pre-pressing my garment. So now I'm gonna take my screen printed heat transfer, which is goof proof. Tip for a full front, about three fingers below the collar. Try to put it the right way. I don't want it to turn out upside down or backwards. All right, here we go. Four seconds, here we go. Here we are. See, and there, all it took was four seconds. Four second pre-press, four seconds hot peel. Look how cute that is. <laughs> I love it. So easy to use. I love goof proof. <laughs> so 
So um, can drop your comments. We have someone in, we have Vicki answering questions. If you have any more info on Goof Proof, but I want to go ahead and move on to the next featured um, product for transfer. Oh, wait, real quick. So exciting news about Goof Proof. Our amazing, it's so amazing. So you can now press Goof Proof as low as 325 degrees. So the big brains of the company, they reinvented, you know, um, refurbished, whatever word. I don't know what I'm, I'm live. I don't know. So you can do it at 365, what I just did. That's more you're like your max productivity time. Or you can do it at 340, you know, lower temperature if it's going on something a little more heat sensitive. But to re help reduce scorching, Goof Proof can now be as low as 325 degrees for 10 to 12 seconds. I just wanted to add that in there. It's going to be a game changer for you and your customers. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> Did you show the Elasti print jersey? I'm I am now. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so it's a, I didn't know if you were gonna go to like the <laughs> the presentation real quick. I mean Oh, hold on. No, I just clicked. One second, you, Liz. One sec. I gotta share it again. You really don't have to. Oh, okay. Hold on. It's um oh, okay, so it's on the same slide. So really quick, and then we can pop out. So Elasti Prints, another great product from Transfer Express. So this is going to be used for um, low temperature application. So again, 50 plus stock colors, great for performance wear. Um, I have an example here. So this is actually an Augusta sportswear jersey, 100% polyester. So the difference is Elasti Prints is a specialty ink. So it does offer more, um, a little more stretch and rebound than Goof Proof, but again, great for um, low temp application at 290 degrees. So just so you know, um, there's an array of other products from Goof Proof. We only have so much time. Um, so Goof Proof, Elasti Prints, and then we have another, I think it's the other, the next slide, Kelly, is it full color? Yep, we go to full color after this. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Okay, you guys, the next big thing that more and more businesses are going to or trying to find a solution for are full color designs. Now, one thing, as, as people are developing their logos, um, sure, businesses might have one, two color designs, but more and more businesses are also developing a full color logo versus just one to two that might have been a little more traditional, say, 20 years ago. So what we are going to dive into are two different options for you. One is a plastisol option and one is a digital um, vinyl option, which I'm going to touch on now. So like I said earlier, the full color transfers are four plus colors. Um, you can make them less than four, but your uh, best profit is going to come with using four or more colors just because you aren't being charged per color on any of these transfers. So the one we are going to talk about first is what is called CAD prints. So like I said, with stalls, you have CAD cut, which is vinyl. That's for your single color rolls. And with full color, you will enter in the world of CAD prints um, or CAD color, which is the same product. CAD prints is something you would order through us. So with that, as you can see, I love this image. The owl that you can see in that Northville image, that is an eco-solvent printer. And you have a white material that is ran through the printer. And then it's eco-solvent ink that is printing on to white material. So when it is all said and done and you have weeded away the material, you have what looks like the girl wearing the happy. Or in this particular case, this is the transfer that we'll be using. So you can see that there's gradients. Obviously, there's multiple different shades of this navy in that transition. And then, of course, um, the white wasn't printed. Now, there are a couple of variety, or a couple of variety. There are a couple of different finishes from matte, semi-matte, um, 
semi matte that has a little bit more of a sheen to it. And then of course, these are perfect for smaller runs and it's great for samples because you can one and done this. So this is what is called subless stop. So this is called CAD prints subless stop. The reason why this transfer is amazing is because it has a charcoal backer, which meaning it helps inhibit any type of dye migration. So if for some reason this really cool um, port authority, you know, uh, digital like camo shirt were to want to bleed, that charcoal backing, that adhesive is going to help block. So this applies at 290, it's 285 or 290, yeah, 280 to 300. I have a cheat sheet. And then we are going to press for five seconds, peel warm, and then press again for five seconds. So I already have my shirt threaded, just going to make sure that my temperature is at five seconds. And we don't need to do any type of pressure adjustment because its pressure is also at a medium. So anywhere from a four to six. Now, once this pops up, I'm just going to apply our transfer. And like Liz said, she does about three inches down from the collar. I am the same. I don't like things too high. And then obviously I don't want things too low. Now to help line up, I am also lining up with this little tag. And of course, the more you do it, the easier it does get. Don't forget there is that placement guide for you to download in the files section that will help you. Cover sheet, another five seconds. And then like I said, warm temperature. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that heat off. We're going to peel. Hey Kelly, can you stop sharing your slides so they can see you? Yes. Hey guys, told you I would stop it and I didn't stop it. So, okay, now that you guys have seen me pull the, or peel the carrier, I am putting the cover sheet back over and then we are just going to apply for another five seconds. Loud beat. Now, because there isn't a carrier, just know that that material almost kind of takes on the shape of the garment. And what I mean by shape are the fibers. So the thicker the fibers, you might see that show up more in any type of transfer, whether it be screen print or vinyl. And then the thinner the fiber, the smoother the transfer will be always. So this is what it looks like complete. So very, very smooth. Again, very flexible with the garment. It's not rigid. It isn't um, it's not too, too stretchy, but as you can see, I'm stretching and it is moving with the garment. So, um, that is full color transfers for the CAD print side of things. Now, again, like CAD cut, these are measured or priced by square inches. Let's see. And then I am going to pop the screen back up and send it over to Liz. I think. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So after I explain this slide, I'll let Kelly know to pop out so then you can get a closer look at the sheet. So full color transfers. Um, I know this has been discussed through other pre, uh, presentations. Um, if you haven't been able to view any other ones, this is such a great product. I'm I was excited about it when it released. I know Kelly was. So full color, ultra color soft. So as you can see in the sheet, so really quick, this sheet is 11 and a half by 18 and you can gang sheet. 
So just like I showed earlier with GoofProof, you know, putting multiple logos on a sheet just to optimize, you know, more bang for your buck, you can do that same thing with Ultra Color Soft. So again, high detail and it's a low temperature application. So if you wanna go ahead and pop out Kelly for the presentation. Okay, so unfortunately I'm not able to get my heat press quick enough to press one for you, but we have so many resources that um, me or Kelly, anyone can provide for you. We also offer live demonstrations as well, but just look at the detail. That's really cool in sign language. I like that one. Liz, I got you. So what, oh, and she has one too. Look how, like you can cover in one order something for the um, left chest, full front, back, pant leg, hip, backside, wherever you wanna put it, that's the awesome thing. Put multiple jobs on one sheet. You have two customers with full color logos, gang them up. That's the cool thing to utilize all of this space. Yep, and so Kelly's showing a few more. Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and press one. So one thing to keep <gasps> in you. mind is um, Liz, Liz's press was set at 365, mine has been at 290. So to go from 365 down to 290, it does take a little bit, but um, it just makes sense for me to go ahead and hop on and do this. Um, so I am using a crop Bella and canvas, just threaded it on very quickly. Again, as you can see the transfer, going to find my ooh, middle or attempt to find it in a circle. <laughs> Apparently I can't line up a circle very well. Okay. And then from there, I am using a cover sheet with this, but not with goof proof. We'll pre-press. And then I'm gonna go quickly in here and adjust my time to make sure that our recipe is correct. Um, I call it the TTP, you guys, time temperature pressure. Uh, Liz touched on it briefly at the very beginning, but that is your recipe for successful application. So um, it, I, we get a lot of questions about, is it durable? Um, is this gonna last, outlast screen print? Is vinyl gonna outlast screen printing? And it's the same way. If you're not applying your screen printing correctly, then it can crack and peel and you know, eventually wash away in the washing machine. And the same thing for the vinyl. So just make sure you are following those recommended instructions just because those have been wash, tested, and approved 50 times. And we know that is what is successful. So going to quickly adjust this and then this will apply. Now this is a cold peel. So when it pops up, we're gonna keep going on with our presentation and then I will peel at the end. And then you guys can see that one revealed. So um, three seconds, it's gonna pop up. And um, Liz, you ready to keep moving? Okay, so how can stalls and Transfer Express help you? Well, the beauty is that you can send your artwork to both stalls and Transfer Express. Now, if you aren't um, what I'm gonna call creative or you don't know what you're doing as far as art design, that's okay, I'm not a graphic artist. Um, you can actually go to both sites and there are templates that you can use. Now I am going to um, highlight Transfer Express in this because they have an absolutely incredible tool. It is called the Easy View Designer. And there are templates upon templates that you can go in, manipulate, add your own, add your own little graphics. It's really incredible what you can create in their platform. Now, if you're one where you're like, nope, I do 100% all of mine. My customers also bring me all of their art. Both platforms allow you to upload your art and then select your transfer, 
select how many you need, and then it will also tell you the quote and the pricing at the end. So um, Stalls has an artwork uploader, and excuse my hand signals, but Stalls has an artwork uploader, and Transfer Express has Easy View Designer. Stalls also has CAD cut templates that you can use, but at the end of the day, uh, Transfer Express basically, I mean, you can go in there and create stuff from scratch. So utilize those. They are extremely beneficial to your business, especially if you are not Corel or um, Adobe trained like myself, meaning I am not trained in those. You want me to do it? Okay. Okay. So with Stalls Hotronics, let's talk about the press. I'm checking my time, you guys, because I want to make sure we have time for questions as well. So here is the thing about Stalls. We have a, is it the blue? Why am I going blank? Is a blue, blue ribbon customer service, second box right there in front of me, you guys. Um, we will be there 24-7, 365, ready to help you. We are industry innovators. Um, we developed the first swing and draw press. And then, of course, we are technology driven, which if you have listened to anybody else, if you've attended John's Fusion um, demo, he reviews what I call the brain of our IQ, which um, is a little different than the autoclam that I'm using. And it's huge that we are made right here in the US. Now, um, oh, this one's you, you wanna go? <laughs> I'll take over. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> so really quick, because we do wanna leave um, some time for Q and A, and what Kelly was saying, we do have um, some speakers, like she said, John, that do, did a live um, demonstration of the Fusion IQ. And I want to say we had, I think Danny was doing the auto open clam as well. So, really quick on the press, why is the heating element important? So, in our Hotronics line, the heating element is going to be a coiled pattern. And it's no more than two inches apart. A lot of times, um, please be careful if you're shopping around heat presses, some of those $100 presses, that heating element we say is like a Z pattern. You're gonna have cold spots. You want a good quality press where there's even amount heat. And that last point ensures constant heat. Okay, so talking about the presses, you guys know that I have been using the AutoClam this entire time. I um, also have mine on the caddy stand, which I also have it dropped on the lowest setting. I'm 5'4", and I can reach above the handle. So both of those presses that you see are what are called clam presses. They open like this, just like a clamshell, and then they shut. The max is a work work, 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 her. I can't talk, work, hearse, horse. Oh my, <laughs> work, her. I No, I'm gonna stop. So it's gonna work very hard for you. Um, it is our most cost effective option. Does that mean you are getting a lower grade press? Absolutely not. You are still getting that um, snake coil effect the coils are still no more than two inches away from each other and it's lightweight. So if you are one that um, will maybe eventually get back to traveling and doing events or setting up and printing on demand, the Max Clam is a excellent consideration just because it is so lightweight. Now, um, I'm gonna say its sister is the Auto Clam. The biggest difference is the fact that you saw this go down and automatically open. With the Max, you are going to have to manually lift it and manually shut it. With the Auto, you're gonna be automatically opening. And then of course, let's see if I can get this, it's hot now. You do have the interchangeable platens. And it just makes it very, very easy to use. Do you want to pop out of the presentation real quick, just so they can get a little bit? Okay. 
Hi, everybody. Okay. So really quickly, some of the basic, like I said, we have other speakers um, doing presentations on the Fusion IQ. So this is a Fusion IQ. Um, this is actually comes on a counter caddy, counter caddy, yeah. Um, so I'm 5'2", not, you know, just a little short, but it's easy for me to use. So you don't have a, an extended reach um, with uh, the Fusion IQ. This is a manual. So when I clamp it down, I have to manually release it when it's over. So really cool thing though, this can, um, you have a lower drawer and also this does swing away. So you have a heat free work um, space while you're loading your garment, positioning your transfers um, and your product on there. And then again, your pressure black knob on top and also how calculate like the brain. So the feature where you have the touch screen where it already has programmed the um, from goof proof to glitter flake to you know, even do custom as well. And then also, um, if you want to hop back on that PowerPoint presentation real quick, because I want to leave time for questions. So Fusion IQ has a touch screen, swing or uh, draw capability, and then cloud storage for job reporting. Um, the Air Fusion IQ, this is actually just engaged with a touch of a button. So on each side, and it has, has that online portal and swing functionality, but this is used with an air compressor. Um, Kelly, did you want to add anything for the Air Fusion IQ? Um, no, but I would say ergonomics, right? Um, that it can be very, very important to some people. And both of these presses make it, especially the Fusion IQ compared to the AutoClam, it is more, more ergonomic. Yeah, more, it's ergonomically better. So with the auto clamp, I'm just gonna demonstrate. I am, I'm gonna stop sharing for just a second. So you guys, with the auto clamp, this is essentially the movement that you are making with the press. With the, or excuse me, with the Fusion IQ, it is more of an in front and then you pull to push down. With the um, auto clamp, you are pulling up and then pushing down. So you have a lot more strain over your head to pushing down. Are they both easy to use? Yes, because it all depends on where you have the press set up. If I had this press, if the slower pattern was at my chest, I would have to go to my toes. You can't even see me in camera. I would have to go to my toes to grab that upper handle to bring it down. And for the fusion, it would almost be like it was directly in my face. So. While choosing a press, um, if maybe you have um, some back issues or you know previous um, ailments, that would be something to consider. But the other thing to consider is what is your press going on, um, because you don't want to put you don't want to have a tabletop that comes up to your shoulders and then go and put that auto clam on top of it because you're not going to be able to reach the top unless you are six three. So. That's just something to keep in consideration. I know at trade shows, people would always come to the booth and talk about, you know, I have an auto clam, but I want to go to the Fusion IQ because it's more ergonomical. But for me, I personally love working with the auto clam because it has that auto open feature. So I just like to point that out because if you are in, you know, if you're having to take those considerations, then that's you know, maybe that's going to differentiate between which one you go with. And then of course that, that, um, air fusion is this, you just hit two buttons and that's it. Um, let's see. I think that's, that's it. Yeah. Let me see. Um, really quick, you guys, I'm going to show the last screen. You should be able to go to our, our, um, presenter section and find our email addresses there and reach out to us if you have any questions or just directly want to talk. So I'm going to pop that screen up just really quick so you can see it. I know we got to go back all the way through this whole thing. <laughs> I don't know why it won't just 
show what I need to. So there's our information. You guys feel free to write it down. Or like I said, go find Liz or myself in the presenter section of our event page. We are always here to help you and um, do our best to guide you with anything you have. So now let's do some question and answer time. So I'm going to end this share screen again. And I know we had a couple of questions on this end. So let's see. Um, oh, one through the press page again. So, okay, I lied. I'm going to pop back up that PowerPoint. <laughs> and backtrack. Okay, so the, the two that aren't mentioned on the breakdown section of this are the craft press, which is your, your very small craft, great, easy to have. It's a nine by 12 surface area. So one thing to keep in mind with that is just because you have nine by 12 inches to work with, you really only have about an eight by 11. So if you're not going to be printing anything bigger than that, then the craft press is great. Um, and then the other one is the A to Z, which is brand spanking new, and it's a 15 by 15. It's an excellent press, you guys. Um, just because it doesn't have additional platens at this moment in time, that's when you would want to incorporate your pillows. Use this for your youth size shirts. Use this size for totes and bags. And, you know, you can use print perfect pads. That way you can print on a variety of products and you don't feel like you're pigeonholed just to a, um, you know, certain size of t-shirt. Um, and then you go to max, then you go to the auto clam. And then from there you go to the fusion IQ and then the air fusion IQ. And then of course the dual, which wasn't mentioned. Um, <clears throat> let me see. Um, okay, so somebody asked about using a lint roller prior to pressing, and you know what? I have pressed a piece of hair underneath vinyl before, so I don't personally see anything wrong with that because you're going to remove those like tiny, tiny little things, um, especially with vinyl transfer, you guys. It's a very sticky back. I actually use the leftover... Um, carriers to take the scraps that have fallen onto the floor or dust or dirt. Um, I use the, I, I repurpose those to where it helps keep me or keeps everything clean. Um, let's see. Um, uh, at the very beginning, there was a question asked what the difference was between uh, stalls and transfer express. So stalls, vinyl, um, specialty transfer, so our emblems, patches, twill, um, and then Transfer Express screen printed transfers. Um, and that's where you get into plastisol inks and your water based inks. Now, the caveat to that is you can do a one color transfer from stalls and you can do a one color transfer from Transfer Express. But where you really start to separate yourself is the quantity and the size and digging a little bit further on down the road would be uh, cavities. But that's why we developed that what to use when PDF is because you should be able to use the little chart to kind of help pave your path. Mm, let's see. Um, da, 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 da. There's a question about um, a, the blue foam handle. And I actually saw a question in another group or another uh, live about um, after you've had your press for years, this rubber pad can start to break down. Um, I've had people replace their blue pad after having their press for 12 years. So know that you do not have to go and buy a whole new platen. You can just buy the thick silicone rubber plaid, plaid pad and um, quick, easy fix. So same thing for the blue handle. Um, 
if for some reason that has worn out on you, just know that's an easy um, part that can be added. Let's see. Um, Liz, can you see any questions from, let me see. Um, trying to get out of windows so I can see if there's. Um, nothing from the, doo -doo -doo -doo. nope. I think we're good on under the Zoom end. Um, let's see. Vicki, are you seeing any other questions? And Alexander, you're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Let's see. All right, so um, you guys, we can hang out and answer any questions that you pop in the comments and check all of that. I'm not seeing any other questions. Oh, it is time. <laughs> the ultra colors. <laughs> yes. What'd you say? I was like, oh, did you just remember or did someone pop in and say something? No, I looked down and I was like, oh, she's cold. We can peel her now. So um, when it comes to transfers, you guys, if it says a hot peel, peel hot, it's always easier to peel hot. If you peel cold, um, then just know that that carrier might have started to reattach itself to the vinyl. And then it just makes it, it makes it more difficult and puts a little more strain on the garment and the vinyl. With screen printed transfers, if it says peel hot, peel hot, it just like, it's like butter. But if it says peel cold, make sure you peel cold. That way you're not removing that transfer off of the garment before it's had time to um, cook properly. <laughs> that's, my, that's my whole theory. Okay. So this one, it's, it's so cold, it's like peeling like butter, so. Oh, that looks so good. But as you can see, like the, the tie dye, it's very, very popular right now. This looks awesome on this, like see. It looks so sweet. Yeah, Green. love it. So awesome, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with Liz and myself, and of course, Vicki on the other end answering any questions. Um, We've said it a thousand times, make sure you reach out. If you have questions, schedule appointments, get with a rep if you are ready to order or even if you have other questions. If you're just really comfortable with somebody, um, that works too. We just wanna make sure you're taken care of in this event. Liz, any closing remarks? Yeah, sure. So again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Again, we love what we do here at Stalls and Stalls Transfer Express. We're here to help you along your journey. Um, enjoy the rest of the night. I think we have a couple more presenters and then we're back at it tomorrow. Again, thank you so much for your time. And then we truly do wish you a successful 2021. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Bye, guys. We'll see you later. Yeah, thank you.